Well, you've fallen upon part one of my aeroplane whirly gig video series. So here we are. First of all, we're going to be building the propeller, the power source, the thing that will drive whatever you want it to drive, if it's capable of doing so. So here we are. I've got a block of oak. I'm now using some very technical devices to create circles, and that will be the hub of the propeller. I'm now using the blade of my chisel to mark the width for the tips and now another technical circle drawing device called a plastic container which cascomite wood glue came in. So there we are, we're going to draw our lines to create our shape of a propeller. Now I'm just using the marker pen to highlight the lines mainly ready for the purpose of the video so you guys can see what I'm up to. There you go, we have the shape of a propeller for our aeroplane whirly gig or jig or whirly bird, whatever you like to call them. So you can cut this out with a variety of different tools in this case you could use the jigsaw like I'm demonstrating there or you could use a coping saw which I'm demonstrating there but beware it will take you a little bit longer but beans I've got one I'm gonna use my bandsaw oh it's so much easier so if you've got a bandsaw use your bandsaw otherwise you'll have to use some hand tools which isn't a problem you'll still get the job done it just takes a little bit longer I have to admit Doing things by hand with hand tools is actually quite nice, really. So I'll return that out to a basic blank. I'm now um, sawing with my Tizak tenon saw or back saw. I'm sawing the pitch onto each blade. Basically, it is the taper of the blade or taper or the, the twist of the two blades. I've put a bit of wax on there just to make it a little bit easier so it flows through. Decided that didn't go deep enough so there I go using the Barco panel saw. Not that keen on the Barco to be fair. I rather use my, yes, my back saw. The little Tizak back saw. It's so much nicer to use. Now this back saw used to be my father's and I can remember as a kid going to the shop and actually buying that with him. Back to the Barco again because I've got no choice because the back saw doesn't cut deep enough because of the back on the saw. So I'm cutting down the blade and stopping at the hub and now I'm using a gouge chisel to go around the shape of the hub. You could use other things, you could just use a, a straight chisel if you like or just a knife. Now I'm using a flat chisel there which is a Robert Sorby chisel just to pare away the excess material and I soon get bored of that and decide to use something different. There you go, trimming around the hub yet again as you do. Yeah, it keeps moving. And now I'm using a wider, well that was a uh, draper chisel. I'm now actually using a braid pairing chisel, which actually works a lot better because it's thinner, because it's thinner and it's longer and it gives you more control. So I just want to check that I'm maintaining the thickness on each blade. I know I've got a lot more material to take off, but I didn't want to get to a point where I have a bad balance while I'm working because then I can induce the balance later on. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to actually put a hole, not like that, centre that drill bit, in the centre of the actual propeller hub. And the reason for this is so I can balance the blade as I pair it with a chisel. Otherwise I'm at risk of the blade being seriously out of balance. So it's best to actually try and balance it as you go. Especially when we get to this stage. So at the moment it's a bit too thick, so I'm going to be taking a lot more material off until I get to the thickness that we're looking for and then getting the profile shape. Because each of the propeller blades have an aerofoil section, just like the aerofoil section you'll find on a wing. The reason for the aerofoil section is it gives you lift on the face of the actual um, blades. Now as you can see, I'm now cheating. So if you've got an angle grinder with a sanding disc, and just like this one, yes, it is a lot quicker. It's a bit like a carving machine. So you probably notice I've been using a variety of different tools so far, really for the purpose of showing you that you can do it with a variety of different tools. 
So here we are using um, basically a drill bit into the little hole just so I can balance the actual propeller. So I'm now sanding around the hub. I just want to be a bit clean and tidy around there. I suppose I'm being a bit pedantic really, but um, I just want to be able to make it a little bit nicer. I'm, it's a bit, if the truth is to be told, I'm actually quite enjoying this process of making this propeller. And being someone who likes to fly aeroplanes, it's just something quite nice to do really. There you go, look, it actually works. So I'm just using the airline as a wind source. I could use a different wind source, but I don't think you'd appreciate that. Now I'm going one step further. I thought, well, what would be nice here is to have a little hub. Or a spinner, as you're supposed to be called. Hello Mr. Spinner. So first of all, I'm just rounding up the um, blank. With a crown HSS chisel. High speed steel chisel. I'm now using it, trying to use a gouge, I found well I didn't think like that. So now I'm going to use a scraper chisel, a round scraper, and that's loads better as you can see. Pairing it off there quite nicely. And I'm just wigging it. There's no real science, I've got no patterns or anything like that the shape of the spin. I just I kinda of just know what I want. If I'm making multiple spinners, would well, that not be different? I'd choose use some kind of pattern or copy maybe. So I'm just going to use the hand sanding pad just to shape up the end a little bit more and get rid of some of the um, chisel lines. That's a big button isn't it? Like a big knob. Now for the sanding I've actually increased the speed. I don't know if you noticed earlier I actually turned the lathe off and I've changed the speed of the lathe to about another 25% faster. And now I'm going to use the lathe to drill the actual hole down the centre of the spinner. And this way I can make sure it is right down in the middle. So what I've done now is I've drilled the hole dead centre down the spinner. Off, polish it off a little bit. If you're, anyone, if you're someone who's used to using a lathe, um, you'll know your hands get quite hot when you're doing it because of friction. I'm just going to pair it back up with the pairing chisel, create me a life which I can pump the actual spinner off to. So there we go. Started with the barcode and decided to like the barcode. So, as you probably know, the colour just changed. Well, I've already put a coat of sanding seal in there. The sanding seal I've used is actually blue. It's cascomite powdered resin wood glue, which I've mixed and actually then mixed it a little bit thinner so you can put it on like a paint. And I've sealed this, allowed it to dry, and it does a brilliant job. It's quite a good little sanding seal. And there's my spinner on top of my propeller bay. I really like that, and I think that works a treat. Don't forget, this is part one of a series of videos I'm making on how to make a aeroplane whirly jig. Now, I'm not quite certain what kind of whirly jig this is going to be, apart from it's definitely going to be an aeroplane, but I'm going to wing it and just see how the wind blows. Well, you managed to get to the end of my video. Well, either I must have grabbed your attention or you just couldn't be bothered to click off. If you'd be most kind and subscribe and maybe click the little bell icon because then you'll get a notification every time I upload a new woodworking video. And I know you'd be excited about that. So, hammer that like button, hammer that subscribe button and comment below. <laughs>